Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. And now, folks, I have a special message from Lum and Abner. They want me to tell you how much they appreciate your sending in for the flashlight they are offering. They really never knew that they had so many friends out there on the party line. As a matter of fact, they've received so many requests that the flashlight factory is swamped. But they're working day and night, and everybody who sent in a wrapper and the ten cents to cover mailing will get their gift as soon as possible. Now, if you haven't yet sent in for your flashlight, here's how to do it. Write your name and address on the back of the outside wrapper from a package of Horlick's malted milk powder. Not the label on the bottle, but the outside wrapper. And it must be from Horlick's malted milk powder. Don't send in wrappers from Horlick's tablets, for they are not eligible. All right, send your wrapper with your name and address and with ten cents to cover packing and mailing costs to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. In return, Lum and Abner will send you an aluminum pocket-sized flashlight complete with bulb and battery. Now send in your request right away. The quicker you get it in to Lum and Abner, the quicker you'll get your flashlight. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When we left our old friends yesterday, Lum and Abner were quarreling over a pistol. And during the scuffle, the gun was accidentally discharged. We haven't learned as yet who, if anyone, was hurt. But as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner and Cedric Weehunt down at their office in the Matrimonial Bureau. Maybe we can find out some more about it. Listen. Well, Mr. Lum was telling down there at the barbershop a while ago that you shot him on a purpose. You said you just shot him to get him out of the race for president. Why, well, I never done no such a thing. I had the pistol there in my hand, and he got to scuffling with me, trying to take it away from me, and, well, some way or another, the gun went off. Well, if it just went off accidental, how could he get shot so many times like he did? Shot so many times? Yes, and he said down there a while ago that he was shot seven times. Why, he weren't no such a thing. Why, it never even hurt him. The bullet just went right through his coat sleeve, and... Just sort of burn his arm a little, all it done. He, he's got his arm all bandaged up and his head all wrapped up, standing around down there telling everybody that he doubts if he ever gets over it. Well, I'll be dead blamed. I wondered why he'd been out of the store all day. I see now what he's been up to, just standing around on the street trying to get folks' his sympathy so they'll vote for him. Yes, sir, I know that's what he's doing for I, I heard him ask Mose Mooch to vote for him. He did. Yes, sir. Said he had to get to be president now for he wouldn't be able to do no hard work. He's going to be crippled up so bad. Well, that snake in the weeds. Just as quick as we count up the votes today while he left right out of here. He must have went right over to his place and bandaged himself up just to get some more votes. Well, how's the contest running now, Mr. Abner? Well, I had been ahead up till today, Cedric, but this last batch of mail that come in was right now all voting for him. Voting for Mr. Long? Yeah, he, he's over 400 ahead of me now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, it looks like you ain't got much of a chance now. No? Uh, I'm just afraid I've lost it, Cedric, last night. I study up something to do right quick. The way I started out, I thought I had the office and gone, but ever since me and Long have been partners, out of all the businesses we've been in, I've never got to be president of nothing yet. Yes, sir, I know he generally always holds that office. He yeah, always has, yeah. I sort of in hopes you'd get elected for if I go to work for you fellas again when you get the store opened up. I, I believe I'd rather have you for a boss than him. Well, thank you. He's just as nice as Pied or somebody comes around he wants to show out in front of, and then he starts bossing me around like I was a varmint or something. Yeah, well, I'm awful bad about that. He does love to show his authority. Yeah, I'd just love to be president just one time. I'd dog it if I wouldn't make him step around. Well, the trouble is, you ain't getting out and trying to get votes like you was there at first, Mr. Abner. Well, I've been running so far ahead, Cedric. I didn't figure I had to. I dog it, I'm going to from here out, though. I'll tell you that. He'll know he's been the race when we get through. That's the reason I called you over here, too, Cedric. I want to hire you to go to work for me. Go to work for him. Yeah, Dick says he ain't using his study down there at his store. Oh, no, no, ma. Just sort of hang around down there and run errands for him whenever he needs me. Yeah, well, now, this will be study work, Cedric, till after the contest is over anyway. And then I'll put you to work there in the store if I'm elected president. What kind of work is it you want me to do? Well, I've uh, got a sign I painted this morning, Cedric. Uh, here it is, leaning against the counter over here, right there. Oh, that sign there? You, yeah. you painted that yourself? Yeah, I done it myself. <laughs> Vote for Abner Peabody for president. Yeah, now all you have to do, Cedric, is just carry that sign up and down the street. 
tomorrow, Saturday, and there'll be a lot of folks in town. And I want you to just stay on the street all day with this sign. Well, uh, wait a minute, though. How much are you aiming on paying me for that kind of work? Well, now, that's what I want to talk to you about, to uh, find out how much you figure this work. Well, that sign carrying runs a little higher than most work, you know. Does. Uh, see, that sort of outdoor advertising, you might say. <laughs> uh, I have to get a pretty good price for that. Well, how much? How much? Well, it, it ought to be worth, uh, uh, how much do you figure on paying me? Well, that sort of depends on what you ask, Cedric. I know I ain't going to pay you as much as you want. <laughs> well, I, I know I ain't going to work for what you offer me, neither. I know that. <laughs> well, now, Cedric, we ain't going to get no place now to one of us named a price here. Well, I ain't going to do that for, I'm afraid my price won't be lower than you, you'd give me. Yeah. I've done that once. Well, uh... If you were setting a price, what would you say about uh, $3 a day? Yes, sir. I believe that's about what I'd say. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, well, here, wait a minute. Now, I never said I'd give you that. That's just what you're asking. Now, I'll give you a dollar a day. Uh, no, I don't believe I could carry the sign for that much. Couldn't. Uh, Two dollars would be the least I could do it for. I, I wouldn't carry it for myself for less than that. Yeah, well, uh, ain't no use for us to talk in, Cedric. For a dollar and a half, the most I'd be willing to pay well, that still leaves us 25 cents apart, then. Yeah. If it ain't worth a dollar and six bits, it ain't worth nothing. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Cedric. I'll just split the difference, make it a dollar and a half. All right, sir. All right. When do we start? Well, you can start right out in the morning. Of course, uh, now you could take it out on the street this afternoon and sort of practice can it so you'll know how good when you start to work tomorrow if you want to. Yes, sir. All i got to do is just walk along well, with you. Here comes Dick Carterson. <laughs> Yes, um, don't tell him I started to work for you, Mr. Abner. No. Um, I, I owe him a little more than I've got coming to me down there at his store. I don't believe he'd want me to quit much. No. Looks like every time I pass that candy case down there, I get further in debt. Yeah, you always was bad about eating stuff up, Cedric. Worse than my shit. Uh, howdy, Dick. Come in. Uh, how do, Mr. Abner? Well, howdy, howdy. Say, Abner, have you seen long? No, not in the last three or four hours. Well, he's down the store a while ago. I didn't hardly know him. <laughs> He's got himself all bandaged up. Looked like he'd been run over by a freight train. Yeah, Cedric was telling me that a while ago. Yes, sir, I seen him a while ago. Yeah, he just used that to get boats with. I know what he's up to. <laughs> Why, sure. He wasn't hurt in here yesterday. Doc Miller was telling me he tried to get him to bandage him up yesterday evening, but the doc told him that there wasn't nothing wrong with him. Just a little powder burnt there on his arm. Why, law me. He stood around here for ten minutes yesterday after the shot was fired before he knew he'd been hit at all. Wouldn't have noticed then if he hadn't looked down and seen a hole in his coat sleeve. <laughs> well, he's claiming now that you shot him on purpose to get him out of the race. Yeah, he knows better than that. You better mind out what y'all are saying, yonder. He comes up the road there now. Yeah, and look at that. Just look at him. Got bandages all over him. The way he rocked <laughs> up there, you'd think I shot him with a shotgun instead of a pistol. <laughs> well, look, he's limping now. <laughs> That's something new he's found since I saw him a while ago. <laughs> Yeah, well, he'll be going around here in a wheelchair tomorrow if he can find one anyplace. <laughs> well, he's sure getting the votes, Abner. Tickled me over at Cherry Hill last night at the Good Roads meeting. They called on him for a talk, and he spent the whole time telling them about this flashlight and asking them to send in for one of them to be sure and vote for him. <laughs> yeah, well, I noticed we got a lot of votes from Cherry Hill today, and he got all of them. Oh, yeah. Well, he just might not have him in tears telling him about you shooting him over there last night. Well, howdy, Mr. Long. Yeah, hello, Long. Gentlemen, gentlemen. How you feeling? Why, just fine. Uh, oh, I ain't either. What's the matter with me? <laughs> I ain't getting along so well. I'm feared now them bullets is lodged in me somewhere. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Now, you fellas better be careful hanging around Mr. Peabody there. Eh? You're liable to get yourself shot. Yeah, I heard about you going over to Cherry Hill making that speech trying to get votes for yourself. Yeah, and I heard about some underhanded work you've been doing, too. Jim Weehunt told me a while ago that you arrested him yesterday for speeding and then turned him loose if he'd promised to vote for you for president. And you've been going around here all day trying to get folks to vote for you through sympathy, Yeah, too. but I ain't stooped so low as to shoot my opponent, though, just to get him out of the race. Well, now, Lom, I told you I never aimed to do that. Now, I never knowed the gun was loaded. Now, that's just the trouble. The unloaded gun is always the one that kills folks. Yeah, don't see how you figure that. Hadn't been loaded, why, it never would have went off. You just got that backwards long. Yeah, but there's been more people killed with unloaded guns than any other kind, ain't there, Dick? Yeah, that's, that's the old saying, Long. It sure is. Yeah, I never know that. After the accident yesterday, why, well, I'd taken all that cattered it out. And that pistol so that it couldn't go off. But if that's the way of it, why, well, I load it back up again. Well, now, Abner, they have to be loaded, but you've got to think they're unloaded for their danger. Well, if I loaded it myself, I'd know good and well that it weren't unloaded. Well, just forget about it. Let it go. I don't want to argue about it. (laughs) 
No, the best thing is just to be thankful neither one of you is hurt, Jesse, and forget about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, though. I was hurt. I'd be crippled for life over. <laughs> oh, I think you'll get along all right, love. Well, I've got to get back to the store, man. Hey, don't hurry, dear. Hey, wait a minute, Dick. I'll just go along with you. i got a list of groceries that Elizabeth wants me to fetch home tonight. Yeah, sure. Come ahead, Abner. Well, I'll see you later, love. Yeah, so long, Dick. Well, I expect I better be going, too. Mr. Abner wants me to carry this sign a while this afternoon on the street. What sign's that? That and yonder, leaning against the counter. He painted it himself. <laughs> Give me a dollar and a half a day to walk up and down the streets with it. Well, I do know. Vote for Abner Peabody for president. Hmm. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. How would you like to earn another dollar and a half a day from me, Cedric? Well, trouble is, I done promised Mr. Abner I'd work for him. Well, all he told you to do was just carry that sign, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Well, there ain't no reason for you not working for both of us at the same time. I'll just do a little more painting on that sign there, and you can make $3 a day and doing the same work. I'll just add a little to what he's got there. Let's see, you vote for Abner Peabody for president. I tell you, I'll just change that vote for Abner Peabody for president of the United States, but vote for Lum Edwards for president of the Jotham Down store. Well, he, he ought to have no objections to that. I, I reckon he'd rather be president of the United States than president of the Jotham Down store. Why, sure you have. <laughs> yeah, get me that paint and brush back there, and we'll fix that sign up right. Well, <laughs> these old fellows don't seem to stop at anything to get a few votes, do they? Ladies and gentlemen, don't fail to send in for one of those fine little fountain pen-sized flashlights that Lum and Abner are sending out to all users of Horlick's malted milk. Every one of you, I'm sure, will want one of these handy, useful flashlights. So send in your request right away and avoid delay. All you have to do, you know, is send in the outside wrapper from a package of Horlick's malted milk powder. Make sure it's the outside wrapper, folks. Don't send in labels from the bottle. And remember, it must be a Horlick's malted milk powder wrapper. Horlick's tablets wrappers are not eligible, I mean. Write your name and address on the back of the wrapper, and then mail it, enclosing 10 cents to cover packing and mailing costs, to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. Send in for your flashlight tonight, if you haven't already done so. For Lum and Abner want to hear from every one of their friends. This is Carlton Brickett, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>